Well, hello, Shoreline Church. This is your devotional for Friday, April 17th. And look forward to seeing you Sunday online at Shoreline Church and encourage you to invite friends along. But today we're going to think about uh, Psalm 69. I'm going to jump through the psalm to some different passages and make a few comments as I go along. So the psalm begins with these words. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths. There is no foothold. I have come into the deep waters. The floods engulf me. I am worn out for calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. Uh, it's fair to say that the psalmist is not in a good moment, uh, that the psalmist is struggling and hurting and being honest with God. And so I want to encourage you just when the moments are tough to cry out to God and be honest. If you say, God, I need your help. I don't feel like I'm going to make it through. And you could read Psalm 69, those opening verses, and it'll give you permission to just say, God, here's where I'm at. And then within that cry, there's not just a, here's how I'm doing, but God, I need your help. I need you to carry me through this. And I know many are feeling that right now. And so listen to, to the same Psalm beginning in verse 13. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. If you remember at the beginning of the psalm, he's saying, I'm stuck in the mire. Now he's saying, get me out of here, Lord. Help me. Deliver me from those who hate me, from deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depths swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. And so the psalmist says, here's all my problems. And then later on, the psalmist says, and God, help. And he kind of goes, with, help me through this. Help me through this. Help me through this. Help me through this. Come to God in these moments and cry out for help. God, help me with my finances. God, help me with the job. God, help me with this relationship. God, help me with my health. Whatever it is, talk to God about it and then cry out for help. And then just getting near the end of the psalm in verse 30, we read these words. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. The deliverance hasn't come yet. But the psalmist says, I've, I've, I've named my fears and my concerns. I've asked for God's help. Now I just need to praise God in the midst of it. And boy, there's something that's tricky about that. I mean, I'm still in the middle of the struggle and I'm praising God. But, but here's the thing. If we can't learn to praise God in the middle of struggles, we're not going to praise God very often because life has lots of struggles. So there's praise in the midst of it all. And then at the end of the psalm, there's this declaration of trust, this acknowledgement that God, I, I know who you are. I know your character. So I trust in you. Listen to verse 34 to 36. Let heaven and earth praise him, the seas and all that move in them. For God will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. This is the way of saying God will save his people. He'll save their land. He'll watch over them. Then people will settle there and possess it. And children of his servants will inherit it. And those who love his name will dwell there. There's this sort of this hope for kind of a new normal, a life normalized a little bit again. People are settling in and kind of experiencing life again. And I think there's a lot of people who are wondering, when's that point going to come where we get kind of back to, it's going to be a new normal, back to some kind of normalcy in life. But I love how the psalmist says, in the midst of the acknowledging my pain and the crying for help, I'll praise God and I'll anticipate that day that by God's power, things are sort of sorted out and stabilized a little bit in my life. Let's pray that we'll experience that in our lives. Living God, we pray that we'd have the courage to lift our needs to you, knowing, God, that you care more than any person cares. You care more than we realize. So, Lord, let us have courage to lift our needs to you. And then, God, we want to ask for your help. We can't do it on our own. We need your help in this time. Remind us to praise you and celebrate your goodness, even in the tough times. And, Lord, give us hope of what lies ahead knowing that you're on the throne, that your hand is upon our lives, and that you're watching over your children. Let us walk in that confidence and peace this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, now Dr. Rick Alexander is going to few, share a few thoughts with you about what's happening in the Monterey area. And just out of his own heart, he's the vice president of our board, and I'm sure he'll encourage you in your walk with Jesus as well. But God bless you, and we'll see you online on Sunday. Hey, Shoreliners. We've now completed four weeks of sheltering in place, and the work we have done as a state, county, and individuals has made a significant impact on the spread of the coronavirus and lives affected. There are hopeful signs this week as we see the rate of new cases in Monterey County is not accelerating 
and the number of hospitalizations is low. The severity of cases is also improving as well. It is too early to say the threat is over or that we're officially on the downside of the curve, but it seems the spread of the virus has definitely slowed. Public health authorities warn it may still be several weeks before they can say sheltering is in place is to be discontinued. I will keep you updated on the timetable. You may want to tune in to Governor Gavin Newsom's daily updates at noon, which can be heard on NPR radio. They are excellent. This slide demonstrates the impact that social distancing and sheltering in place has had with regards to hospitalized COVID patients in California. This information comes from the California Department of Public Health and is updated on a weekly basis. As can be seen in the graph, from March 26 through April 14th, the number of hospitalized COVID-19 patients has been increasing. Importantly, however, is, as you can see in mid-April, the number of new cases is starting to flatten. More importantly, however, is the number of patients that require ICU therapy has been virtually unchanged as of April 8th. Both of these are very encouraging signs and show that in California at least, sheltering in place and social distancing has been having a significant impact on the disease. I wanted to mention the impact of sheltering in place with regards to our well-being. Sheltering in place and social distancing is stressful impacting us emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Loss of job, being stuck at home, having to homeschool for perhaps the first time, and other new responsibilities is challenging and can negatively affect our health. I've talked to many of my patients that are having real difficulty sheltering as they deal with social isolation and other problems. Shoreline is here to help and assist with prayer, lay counseling, and other support. Please check out their website for resources and don't be afraid to reach out. In addition, last week, the California Surgeon General, in conjunction with the California Department of Health, released a helpful resource discussing ways to decrease stress by outlining six key elements that contribute and providing practical information to reduce the negative effects on our health. That information is accessible through their website, which you can see below. This slide from the California Department of Health's website outlines in practical form the six areas that contribute to stress in our life and will outline on the website also practices and ideas that can reduce stress in these six essential areas. Starting at the top, we see mindful practices. I like the hands because it suggests that someone is in prayer. Physical activity, maintaining this is also very important as well as maintaining good quality sleep, supportive relationships, mental health care, and balanced nutrition. For more information, please see the website. It actually is excellent and the information provided is practical and easy to apply. The last two things I would like to mention in this week's update uh, involve uh, potential treatments for COVID-19 and where we stand with that. And also I'd like to comment on the antibody screening. Uh, first, there are three different categories for potential treatments. The first uh, involves investigational therapies uh, which utilize antivirals that are currently uh, on the market. The second is a NIH trial that's looking at uh, several hundred patients to see if they respond to the hydroxychloroquine. And the third involves convalescent plasma transfusions. Uh, that uh, specifically means that they take a blood donation from a patient that is recovered from COVID-19. They uh, fraction off, fractionate off the serum uh, which has uh, a rich amount of antibodies, and then reinfuse it into a, a patient that's currently symptomatic and is hospitalized. The theory is the antibodies existing in the serum will then go out within the body, be distributed, and attack the uh, active virus, improving the patient's outcome. There was a report earlier this week in the New England Journal uh, of a study of 53 COVID 
19 patients who were hospitalized, uh, and uh, they were given remdesivir, a uh, antiviral medication, and 68% of the patients had a significant response being able to come off the ventilator and had improved oxygenation. This is very exciting news. In addition, um, they found that the mortality rate was 13%, approximately half of what was expected. Uh, this is a preliminary investigation, but I think that we're gonna be seeing that uh, hopefully some of the uh, antivirals that are already in use um, may have a significant impact in COVID-19 patients. And just one note about antibody testing, uh, the future of uh, treating and uh, tackling COVID-19 will require us to be able to test for antibodies to see who ultimately is, has had the virus and is immune to the virus. Unfortunately, at this time, we don't have any reliable antibody testing. The uh, testing that you might have read about uh, last week that was being done out at Ryan Ranch was not FDA approved, and the laboratory doing that testing did not have a valid license to do so. Thus, the health department has asked them to stop performing that test, and certainly I would not recommend anybody at this time get a antibody test because there is uh, no uh, regional or local uh, reliable testing being done. Well, listen, that's it for this week. Uh, I hope you uh, found this information helpful, and I look forward to talking with you next week. If you have any specific questions, uh, please let the folks at Shoreline know, and they'll pass them on to me. So God bless you, and have a great week.